When you're asked to convert a number from base 10 to another base, you're going to have to do a little bit of division and a little bit of subtraction, a little bit of everything really, to convert a number from base 10 to another base. So in this example, we're asked to convert the number from base 10 to base 4. And the number that we're given is 328. We know in base 10, that represents 8 ones, 2 tens, and 3 one hundreds. We want to convert this to base 4. So I went ahead, and knowing that I'm converting this number to base 4, I know that each column is going to be a power of 4, starting with the power of uh, 4 to the 0 power, then 4 to the 1st, 4 squared, 4 to the 3rd, 4 to the 5th, and so forth. So knowing it's base 4, the first thing I do is just label what each column in base 4 represents. The first column represents the 1's column, then the 4's column, then the 16 column, the 64 column, 256, and 1024. What I like to do, and you might be saying, well, how do I know what to stop? How do I know not to continue to the next power of 4? You know, the 4,000, and what's that going to be, 4,096, something like that. How do I know not to continue? Well, what you want to do is go to, continue to do powers of 4, or powers of 3, powers of whatever base you're converting to, until you get to the number, the first time that that particular place value is larger than the number you're given. So we're given 328. We can continue to go until we get to a number larger than 328, and then we can stop. Now, we're going to be in base 4. So when you're in base 4, you know that you're only allowed to use the digits 0, 1, 2, and 3. We're only allowed to use the digits 0, 1, 2, and 3, and we need to place them in these particular values here, these place values, these columns, in order to represent 328 objects. So if we were to put, and this is going to be wrong, but if I were to put a 2 in this particular column, what this represents, a 2 in this column represents 2 times 1024. And we know that this is going to be a certain amount of objects much larger than 328. In fact, if I put any number in there, Okay, if I put any number in there, this is wrong. If I put any number in there other than 0, it's going to be larger than 328. So I know that no digit is going to go into this 1024 column. We do see that 256, there are 256 objects that go into 328. The question is how many? How many, how many times does 256 go into 328. Okay. We see that really it only goes in one time, right? One group of 256 goes into 328. So putting a 1 in this column gives us 256 objects. Now we need to fill in these other columns. So what we want to see is, okay, this represents 256. How many of the 328 we originally had are left over? So we have 328 and we just, by putting that 1 in that column, we just represented 256. So how many are we going to have? This is going to be 2. This is going to be 7. We're going to have 72 objects left over. So just by putting a 1 in this column, we want to know how can we use the, the digits 0, 1, 2, and 3 and place them strategically in these columns to represent 72. Notice I don't want to put another no, I don't want to increase this to 2, because if I put 2, that would be larger than 72. So how many times does 64 go into 72? Obviously, we see that that's just 1. If we put any other digit other than 1, if we put 2 or 3, then we see that this particular number would be larger than 72. So only one group of 64 goes into 72. So putting that 64 there, what's left? Well, this will be 8, and this will cancel out. So now we need to represent 8 objects using these columns. So we need to put zeros, 1s, 2s, and 3s in these columns here, where every number that goes in this particular column represents a group of 16. 
Every digit that goes in here represents a group of four and groups of one. So how many times does 16 go into eight? Well, 16 does not go into eight. So there are going to be zero groups of 16 that we can make with eight objects. How many times does four go into eight? Well, eight divided by four gives us two. So if we were to subtract that, we would have zero left over, which means we have zero ones. So this would be our number, 11020. Zero, zero. This would be our number in base 4. If we wanted to talk about 328 objects, that's the same as talking about the number 11020 one, zero, zero in base 4. Because each particular value, right, each place value, each column, represents a different power of 4. So this would be the, the ones place, the fours place, the 16, the 64, the 256. And what we want to do is to first figure out the value of each column, and then think about how we can place the digits 0, 1, 2, and 3 in those columns to represent the number 328. Let's look at another example. Okay, let's do another example. We're going to convert this number to base 2. We are given a number, 135, and I know now that we have discussed what different bases mean, you might be saying, how do I know that's not in a different base? Well, if we don't see a little sub number here, then we assume it's base 10. So we're in base 10. This represents one group of 100, three groups of 10, five groups of 1, and we want to convert this to base 2. As soon as I see that it's base 2, I'm going to start by labeling each column. So we have the, we always have the ones column, right? We have the ones column. And then now we're going to go up by powers of two. So we're going to continually multiply by two. We have ones. Multiply that by two, we have the twos column. Multiply that by two, we have the fours, the eights, the sixteen, the thirty twos, the sixty four, and the one hundred and twenty eight. Now I'm going to stop there, not only because I'm out of room, but because you can see if I were to multiply by 2 again, I would get a number that's larger than 135. So these are the only columns that I need. We want to get up to the column that's you know, the column that is the one that's one less than the larger number. So if we were to multiply this again, we get 256. That's larger than 135, so we can erase that column. Now we're in base 2. So what numbers are we allowed to use in base 2? What numerals, what symbols are we allowed to use? Well, we're always allowed to use zeros. And we're always allowed to use ones. But in base 2, we're not allowed to use the symbol for 2. That symbol for 2 does not exist in base 2. We can represent it in base 2, but we do not include the number in that particular, that, that symbol in that base. So what we want to do is strategically put zeros and ones in these columns in order to get a number that equals 135. So if you think about that, how many times, let's start, we always should start the furthest to the left column, right? The largest column that we can start at. So how many times does 128 go into 135. Well, we have two choices. It goes in zero times or it goes in one time. And we know it's not zero because 135 is larger than 128, which means if you were to have 135 objects spread out, you could find 128 of them. So we have one group. Let me change colors here. We have one group of 128 that goes into 135. So just by grouping, if we started with 135, and just by putting that 1 there, that represents 128. So how many are left over? Well, it looks like we only have 7. Right? So just by putting this 1 in this column, we now need to put zeros and 1s in the remaining columns in order to represent the number 7. So we see that how many times does 64 go into 7? If we have 7 objects, we need to be able to group 64 of them together. Well, that's going to happen 0 times. We're not going to be able to have that happen. Same thing with 32. 
Same thing with 16. Again, same thing with 8. So we're going to put zeros in all these columns because if we were to put the number 1 in any of these columns, we would be larger than 7. We only have 7 left over. So how many times does 4? We see 4 goes into 7. That, goes only, that only goes in once. So we can take a 4 away. What are we left with? We need to make the number 3 using these columns here. 2 goes into 3 one time. So we have 1 left over, and we see that 1 goes in once. And we got to 0. Good. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. In base 2, that little sub 2 represents base 2. This is the same thing as 135 in base 10.